plus one over one minus s e to the one minus s times t evaluated from one to infinity, right? Because the, do the domain, the range of interval of integration is different. Okay, so now, now we can start plugging some things in. So remember we're plugging in for t. I guess I was careful to put that here, but that's good, that's good context. So if we put t equals one into this, what do we get? Yeah, good. E to the one minus s over one minus s. Then what if we put t equals zero into that? And then what if we put t equals one into that? Well, basically be exactly the same as before, except it'll be over one minus s squared. Yeah, good. One minus s squared. And look, it's attached to a minus sign because of the minus sign out front, right? And then if, what if we put t equals zero into that? Yeah, exactly, because, oh wait, I left something out here, right? E to the one minus s. And then the other one is just one over one minus s squared, right? because e to the zero is one. What do we get for the next part? So what do we get if we plug in infinity? So keeping in mind, this is important here. Yeah, yeah, yeah we're gonna get zero. Because e just goes like decay. K. Exactly, exactly, yeah. exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Notice that it's important here that s is bigger than one, right? Because if s is not bigger than one, then you have exponential growth, right? So this actually only works for s bigger than one. We'll maybe note that at the end, right? But anyway, plugging in infinity or taking the infinite limit, you'll get zero. And then what if you plug in one? Well, I think you're getting something pretty similar to what we have on the board, right? So minus one over one minus s, minus e to the one over s, yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah, no, no, this is the same, yeah. So this, that and that cancel, and we are left with what? in the end, one minus e to the one minus s over one minus s squared. 